folks. My name is Madura Maskaski, and I'm the co-founder and VP of product at Platform9. And I'm going to use this session to get into a deep dive of Platform9. Right? I think we've heard about the background, who we are, where we got started from. And so I'm going to use this session to get into an overview of the service, the product that we're building, some of our key differentiators. And then we're going to jump into a demo. And I'm going to use the demo session to hopefully give you a much more in-depth perspective into the product that we're building, some of the use cases we're addressing, and some of our key differentiators. So let's get started. So just by ways of quick context, right? Um, Platform 9's mission is to make private clouds extremely simple and easy to deploy for organizations of any size. Right? And we think that the emerging virtualization technology landscape with the advent of KVM as the free open source hypervisor and with Docker containers and the changes that have happened on Hyper-V, all these things have resulted in you as an end user having a lot of choice. Right? No longer is VMware the only virtualization technology that you have to use. There are multiple choices available. And we think that's a good thing, right? Choice is a good thing. But it in turn presents a challenge, a challenge from an end user's perspective, where the private cloud automation software that you're now going to deploy for your environment needs to help you embrace this diversity, right? Needs to help you manage it under a single portal. And we think that in that context, OpenStack is really well placed to help you address that problem. Right? It's an open source project that has gained a lot of mindshare over the past two years or so. And the best thing about OpenStack, we think, is that it's fundamentally designed to help you embrace this diversity, right? so that you can pick the right technologies of, uh, of choice that are suitable for your infrastructure. And then OpenStack's management, management portal abstracts out a lot of that complexity for you. So we think that this is, you know, this is one of the big reasons why we are passionate about OpenStack. But we do think that the existing deployment models that are popular with OpenStack have a number of challenges and problems today. So with that, let's introduce Platform 9. And let's look at how we are fundamentally trying to disrupt the private cloud management space. So Platform 9, in a nutshell, right, is OpenStack as a service. It's OpenStack delivered to you as a web service that's designed for management of your private infrastructure. Right? And what I mean by that is um, your servers, your hypervisors, your storage, networking, all of that remains within the parameters of your data center. It's all within the parameters of the firewalls of your data center. But it's just the management software, and we call it the OpenStack controller, that is hosted outside, outside of your data center, somewhere in the cloud of our choice. Right, and um, the fundamental benefit that we think of this model to you as an end user is that no longer do you need to worry about downloading or deploying or getting your OpenStack environment up and running. Right, you don't need to worry about where should various OpenStack services go and which way should they be configured, etc. Right, all of that is completely taken care of by us. And so you can focus on consuming your OpenStack private cloud environment uh, with us doing all the heavy lifting. For example, a major upgrade of OpenStack comes out every six months or so. And then with this model, we take care of that upgrade. So when you say Platform 9 hosts the OpenStack controller, mm -hmm. you mean on your premises and it's remote to us. Tying right. back to your comment where you mentioned that you'd be similar, seen similarly to Meraki. That's exactly right. So it's a cloud-hosted controller exactly. at that point. Yep, so it's a cloud-hosted controller designed for management of your infrastructure. And so the key benefit of this model, like I said, is that you, don't, you no longer need to worry about babysitting that OpenStack infrastructure. We take care of that for you. So you get, um, you know, you convert your infrastructure from just a bunch of server storage and networking to a fully functional operational OpenStack environment with very low operational overhead. So I have a quick pictorial view into just how this deployment model works, right? So an IT administrator who is interested in getting started with a Platform 9 account will go to our website, go to platform9.com, and will sign up and create an account. And when you do that, what we do on the back end, behind the scenes, is we deploy a logical deployment of Platform 9 managed OpenStack on behalf of your organization. Bare metal? Or so this is deployed in the cloud of our choice. So it's deployed with, through virtual instances. So it's not on bare metal. So we create a logical deployment of Platform 9 managed OpenStack 
uh, and this is a dedicated deployment for your organization, right? So we do not share it, even though it's deployed through virtual machines. We create a dedicated deployment for you. It's not shared with any of our, our platform and other customers. And so as a next step, what we give to you is we give you some software agents, okay? And so for you, all you need to do is download and deploy these software agents on your private cloud physical infrastructure. Right, so it, these are the RPM packages or Debian packages if you have a Linux environment, or this is a virtual appliance, an OVA appliance for a VMware environment. Right, and so once you do that, once you drop in that agent, it takes literally a matter of minutes. Right, you do that, and then uh, the agent once installed, it makes an outbound connection with our cloud-based controller. And then through this channel, once that happens, um, platform line controller is then able to discover all the information about your infrastructure, right? So it starts gathering data about what servers do you have, what storage are they connected to, or what networking they're associated with. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so um, I think I get the the broad range of, the, or the broad idea anyway of how you're how you're doing this. Um, And one of the other slides, he mentioned that the bottom end for your target installation base is around 50 physical servers. Mm -hmm. Why so big? It seems like you could do that as an entry level with like 10 if you put everything on its own server. What, um, is there a reason you're not targeting smaller than that too as an entry level to, to this whole crazy cloud thing? Yeah, no, and then that's a good question. So we do think that our model fundamentally makes it really simple for people with small deployments such as 10 servers to get started really quickly. And uh, I guess in today's world with beefy server deployments, you can really create a powerful cloud just using that infrastructure. We just typically observe that with the customers that we interact with, mm -hmm. that they typically tend to be at a server deployment of about 50 servers or so. That's when they really start having, I think, the number of employees of a certain size and the number of organizations of a certain scale so that they start deriving that benefit out of a private cloud. But in theory, it can work for smaller deployments as well. Does the licensing scale linearly, or does it start out at the, we assume you have 50-ish servers? No. So the licensing, uh, and we'll, you know, I'm not going to talk too much about licensing right now, but licensing does kind of scale linearly. So okay. it's set to enable you to create private clouds of any size. Interesting. All right. Okay, so you know, once you download and deploy that agent, um, and once it connects with that cloud-based controller, then what we're able to do is we're able to transform that diverse pool of infrastructure that you have, and it might be scattered across different data centers, different geographies. We're able to convert it into a single logical pool of capacity, right? And then you as an IT administrator, you can start enabling self-service access to your end users. Right, so they no longer need to come to you and request virtual machine creations, et cetera. They can directly go to the platform line portal and do that. And so this makes them happy because their processes are much more efficient now. And it makes you as an IT administrator happy as well for two reasons. Right, first of all, you were able to go from just a bunch of servers to a bunch of hardware to a fully operational OpenStack based cloud that you literally got up and running in a matter of minutes, right? So you got, you created this environment with very low operational overhead. And then secondly, you are now enabled to set the right kind of policies, uh, you know, the right kind of quotas and multi-tenancy for your environment, for your organization, which makes you comfortable to give self-service access to your end users. So we think this is a win-win situation for both developers or end users as well as IT.